President Donald Trump is in Europe. He just met with the leaders of the European Union. Uh, and the EU and the press there, they can't wait to, uh, to try to discredit him. What's going on uh, within the EU uh, and France in particular, your native country, what's going on with their attitude towards America? Well, um, I believe that France has a love-hate attitude toward, toward America. Mm -hmm. When you speak with people in the street, they would tell you that we don't owe anything to America, we don't like America, all they do, all they know how to do is eating McDonald's and they're big and fat and they have no culture and everything. And the best, and the, as soon as they can, they go to buy a pair of, of jeans, they buy, they buy Nike shoes, they go to eat the McDonald's that they criticize the American for, they go to watch uh, American series and American movies and where do they want to go on on vacation here in the United States that hate and love mm. I believe that the French never forgive forgave the American for saving their life afterward for during World War II they never forgive forgive them you know it's a it's a difficult situation when you owe something to someone because you owe them Mm -hmm. And when you don't like to give, mm -hmm. when you don't like to, to believe that someone helped you, it's a difficult situation. Besides, I believe that the French culture has an inferiority complex mm -hmm. for a long time now. Mm -hmm. And uh, to compensate that inferiority complex, they believe they are above the fray, above the others. So it's a difficult situation when you are not that good anymore, when you don't lead uh, with culture anymore, in politics anymore, and uh, you see the neighbor and uh, doing better, better than you, and, and you see especially America with Donald Trump becoming again strong and uh, powerful and uh, upfront and with uh, with everything that they don't like, which is the American dream, and they love at, at the same time. It's a difficult situation for them. Mm -hmm. What kind of a, an attitude are you getting? Uh, obviously, when did you leave France uh, for uh, res residence? I left, I believe I left uh, 10 or 12 years ago. Uh -huh. And, uh, and uh, it was about time. It was a bad time or about time? About time about, about for me to leave, yeah. Uh -huh. Why so? Because it was changing too much. It was uh, getting sad country. I would, I would look at people's face. They were, they were sad. They were resigned. They were, they were not feeling good. And uh, everything was going down the drain. I could feel it. I could see it around me. And also there is another issue. I have my, my, my personal level of request for freedom is above what France is, is willing to give to citizens. So I couldn't stay there. I, I need more freedom than what the French system uh, uh, allow. What type of freedom are you asking or, you, or uh, expecting? Well, I expect, uh, I expect my freedom of thought. My freedom of expression, yeah. my freedom of doing business when I want, if I want, with who I want, uh -huh. and uh, my freedom of telling things the way they are. Oh, and you're a writer. And I'm a writer, yeah. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a vitriolic writer, meaning I don't write what, what people like to read. I write what I feel. I write what I what I want to write about, and uh, 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 a lot of people are pissed. A lot of people are pissed at what I write because I don't write what they want to to hear on both sides, on both sides. Because uh, it happened that I write on politics, but I don't like politics. I write about politicians. I despise politicians always did because they play politics you know i have one only concern in life which is human being the people mm -hmm. my only my only way of judging people of judging politics is does it benefit people or not mm -hmm. 
So I examine, I listen, I, I read what, I, what comes to me according to my common sense, according to my own analysis on life, which was so far quite good, so I trust myself and my judgment. And uh, if I believe it benefits people, I like it. If it doesn't, I reject it. So this has no political color, as you can understand. What's the, what's the difficulty that, uh, that the EU is having towards a, a President Trump and the American policies now, even in, in Britain, who's looking to leave the EU, and yet it seems that the press is uh, stirring up anti-Americanism uh, among the people because Brexit was a, a popular move. What's going on in Europe towards America? Well, I believe you have uh, a lot of that here, which is uh, simple. Uh, uh, the left is the media. The media is the left. Lefties decided to enter the media in the 50s, 60s. They understood that this is where you get the power of, uh, of uh, influence, where you get the power to tell people what they should think, to show people things and to hide other things. So the left does not like America because America is freedom, America is capitalism, and uh, they don't like capitalism, they don't like freedom. So they don't like that. And, and, and for that, Trump is the worst of the worst because he defends exactly what they despise. Which is, which is why they have such a huge problem. You know, here, I read in a Harvard uh, uh, study that 90% of the media uh, are against, are negative on Trump. Yeah. You are very lucky with 90%. Over there, it's 100%. In European, European media. Yeah, European media. Well, I don't know, I don't know, I cannot talk for uh, Dutch media or uh, or uh, uh, Brit or Brit uh, uh, German or Great Britain. I don't know all of it, but I know very well uh, Germany. I know very well, and France. It's 100% anti-Trump, anti-capitalism, and anti everything he represents. You know, defending his people, his people first. That's something they hate. And uh, what's going on? What what just happened now with EU is is asking them to pay their fair share for of NATO. Of NATO. What does it mean? It means taking money away from the from the socialism, taking money away from the, the, the all the socialist uh, uh, rule law that they have in Europe. A little bit away to take care of themselves, to defend themselves. They don't want to do that. They don't want to. They want. They want to say we have. We have no war. We are not at war. We are pacifist. And at the same time, they wouldn't want to leave NATO, and they wouldn't want the United States to stop helping them and defending them. They are in a contradiction, and Donald Trump doesn't like that. Donald Trump is straightforward. He he, he tells things that they are. He says. If you want to take care of your children, you have to pay for that. It's not our job. And he linked that to the, to the, to the tariff, you know, and to the trade. And uh, they didn't like it because he tells the truth. The truth is that they charge heavy, traf heavy tariff to, to the U U.S. and the U.S. charge very little. And they don't like to hear about it. You know, uh, last year, when uh, Donald Trump spoke about it for the first time, he said, you know what, you don't want tariff? Okay, fine, I agree with that. Let's go zero tariff, total freedom. You couldn't read that anywhere in any European media. That, that was this hidden, because this is what they pretend to want, but they, that's not what they really want. What they want is to keep their tariff and that Donald Trump would continue the status quo and not charge them the same thing. Mm -hmm. we're, we're seeing a lot of French emigrants, people who left France, here we're, we're in front of a, a French uh, cafe 
here in Los Angeles. There are many new uh, bakeries, patisseries that are opened by French people. Israel has a whole community in Netanya and around of uh, French emigrants. Why are uh, French people, traditionally French people, leaving the country? Well, first of all, the French don't like to move. So when, when one French person moved and leave the country, it's like, uh, it's like uh, 10,000 in another country because they have strong cultural resistance against moving. So they, 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 they move, they, they leave by the drove because their children cannot make a living, you know. The official number is like 20% of the young people cannot find a job. But this is not the real number. The real number goes f much deeper than that because when they are lucky enough to find a job, it's never the job they wanted, never the job they, they studied for or they, they got uh, trained for. So in the end, after a few years of research, they, they end up with a job, low paid, not the one they wanted, and, and they, it's resignation. That's one thing. So the people see their children have no future anymore. Now, they, they see the Africa invasion. They see a Muslim invasion that the journalists tell them it doesn't exist. The journalist media in, in France tell people, don't trust your eyes. What you see in the street is not true. What is tr the truth is what we tell you. I believe that people don't like that. So a lot of people are moving out, are leaving the country because they understand they have no future. And it's a very difficult situation for them. But as you said, I think about 100,000 or 150,000 uh, uh, French people moved to Israel. A lot moved to Canada. We don't know how many. Uh, the number are not easy to find, and I understand why. But must be a lot because people, French people, don't speak English very, very well. So they go to Quebec, and a lot came here, of, of, of course, also. Uh -huh. But. If you go to, uh, historically, uh, the Catholic Church has not been kind to uh, Jewish people in France, but since the Holocaust, they've been tempor uh, they've, uh, uh, temporarily uh, overcome their anti-Semitism. So why are Jews feeling not safe in France these days? Well, um, it has nothing to do with Catholics. It has to do with Muslims. Let's, let's bring hard, painful numbers. 100% of the aggression against Jews are committed by Muslim people. 100%? 100%. 100%. 100%. France is the only Western country in the world where so many Jews were killed during the 21st century. The 20th century. 20th century, yeah. Uh -huh. Like uh, we're talking about 14 or 15 people, 14 or 15 Jews were killed in France in the 21st century. Nowhere else in Western country did this happen. Far from that. And who killed these, these Jews? Jews? Muslim. Muslim. And Muslim only. Not uh -huh. Catholic, non-fascist, non, not neo-Nazis, not uh, uh, far-right, extreme-right uh, 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 lunatics. Muslim. And Muslims have, are very aggressive in France. And they are in neighbors where the Jews used to live because the Jews, uh, uh, opposite to what is always said, uh, they are not very. They were not very rich, and they still are not very rich. A large majority of uh, Jews are very modest, and they used to live in suburbs, and uh, in good harmony with the Muslim when when there were not too many. But now they cannot be there anymore because they are attacked, under attack, or killed. They cannot. Put, they cannot have their children in public school anymore. The public school dean tells the Jewish people, "Do not, do not." register your children in our school because we cannot protect them. We cannot protect them in the school and if we can protect them in the school, we cannot protect them outside of the school, in the street. So what is the future for them? What is the present? There isn't. So they, they come to North America or they go to Israel? 
North America, Israel, or Canada. Uh, that's that's all. That that the main the main location they they are thinking of going to. Uh huh. But then you get uh, or you had Manuel Valls, yes. uh, who stood up against this Islamic anti-Semitism, and how, and how well was he treated? Well, uh, he stood up how with words. Well, how well was was he viewed in in his trying to stand up for these uh, principles of fraternity and democracy? Well, uh, they didn't like it. The the left, the socialist left, didn't like it because they, they be friend with Muslim because they welcome immigration. So he, they saw it as a traitor, and uh, they saw him as uh, him giving. Uh, tools and weapon to the far right, which is the worst of the worst for them. And when I mean them, I mean the political class and the media, and they like hand in hand. And uh, uh, the Jews liked him because he was defending, he, he was defending them as a position. But did it, did it, uh, uh, did it ask a friend to vote uh, against uh, uh, the, the UN vote? that are directed toward Israel? He didn't. Did he ask uh, French to vote against a UNESCO decision where it says that uh, uh, the Wedding Wall and, uh, and uh, uh, the... East the, Jerusalem? Sorry? East Jerusalem ter uh, e No, not Jerusalem. Uh, not East Jerusalem. Judea but and Samaria. The, the, no, no. The holy Jewish site uh -huh. belongs to the Muslim. Oh, yeah. He didn't vote against that. Yeah. So that's that's French politics, or it's politics, unlike uh -huh. Donald Trump, I have to say. Because Donald Trump, he he he, he says I will do this, and he does it, and 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 politicians and media are extremely surprised, but also they are pissed at that because when you have a politician who does what it says, what does it show? It shows, it reminds people that the others it did not, doesn't, don't. Yeah, yeah. And, and they were used to it. And then suddenly they said, oh, that's not the only way. There, you could have a, 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 a politician, you could have a leader who does what he says. Yes. Uh, but isn't the far right a genuine threat to uh, Jewish safety and future in, in Europe? Okay, I don't have a crystal ball, ball, so don't ask me about the future. I have no idea. You know, you, rem you, you remember that two months before the Arab Spring, no one, no expert anywhere in the world could predict the Arab Spring, right? So okay. I'm, I, don't have a, I don't have the ball to tell the future. I cannot tell you. I can tell you about the past, for the 30 last years, I can tell you about the present. And I can tell you now they are not a threat. You know, in France, there always been some anti-Semitism. Since I was born, I was raised knowing that there is anti-Semitism. But it's, it was, and it still is, anti-Semitism of words. People talk badly about Jews among themselves. When I was in law school, uh, I didn't look like Jew, so I was, uh, I was among the, 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 the far right. I, was, I infiltrated them to know them better, and uh, they were saying nasty things about the Jews, about us, but he stopped at words. They would never, they wouldn't act on it. Never, and still now, till now. Uh -huh. And you know, the worst of the words, the, the real nasty anti-Semitic now, they wouldn't, they wouldn't and they never did attack a Jew in the street. They don't do that. It's still words. Opposite to Muslim, who is blood. It's blood anti-Semitic. It throw their, <coughs> sorry, yeah. throw their, throw their, their cut, cut their throat, cut their throat. And, 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 and beat them and, 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 and lynch them if they can. Uh -huh. In the, the EU is now trying to find ways around the US sanctions so that they can get money directly to Iran. They want to keep funding Iran with the, with the knowledge that Iran is developing uh, weapons of mass destruction that could be used against Europe. And yet, when President Trump is trying to isolate Iran, why are the European leaders, the politicians, why are they working uh, towards uh, continuing doing business with Iran? Well, 
to answer to that, let me let me go back to what happened uh, with uh, with the meetings in uh, NATO. You know what what Trump said. He said, "How can you, on one hand, say that you have sanctions against Russia, and on the other hand, you do business with them and you and you build a pipeline when you're gonna you're gonna send the the, the dollars through the pipeline to to Russia?" Yeah. You know, it's a contradiction. Yeah. The European are not used to do what they say and to say what they do. And uh -huh. to back to back to Iran, they don't care about uh, Iran uh, uh, being nuclear, nuclearized. They don't care about that. The European But, leaders don't care? No, they don't. They don't. Because they, they don't feel the threat. They believe it's, it's Middle East. They, they hear the, 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 the Ayatollahs saying that the big Satan is who? America. What do they care? They hate America. Small Satan is who? Israel. They'd be happy, you know, if the Irani if the Iranian would uh, would um, have a, a second genocide without without and, and them having the the hand clean, they would be very happy. You know, it's still there. Yeah. Yeah. But the Iranians they make no secret of their goal to export the Islamic Revolution beyond Iran into other countries, into Europe. In fact, part of their agenda in having uh, Muslim uh, migrants into Europe is to Islamize Europe. Why wouldn't these politicians be concerned to, to stop the, the threat of nuclear terror? Uh, God is in the details. For one part, they're scared, so they submit. It's still the submitting mentality. For another part, they don't care. You know, the main leaders of Europe have no children. Macron has no children. Merkel has no children. May has no children. In, in, EU leaders have no children. So don't you think that a leader like Donald Trump, who has four or five children... And grandchildren. And grandchildren. And uh, uh, Macron, who has none, don't you think that in the unconscious there is a difference? That's one thing. Uh -huh. Also, also, They want to save the European economics, which is in bad situation, bad shape. They were expecting in Iran to, to open huge market. And suddenly they realized that Trump uh, is cutting them from yes, that yes. with sanction. So all they care is the money. They wouldn't tell that. They would say, oh, the American, they, 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 de they declare a war because of uh, market uh, or because of the oil. What about them? No, they're perfect. You know, they're above the fray. No, that's not true. It's business. They want market because they are losing ground. Uh -huh. Do you believe that uh, in the same way peop some people believe that uh, the money which Obama gave to Iran was given back to the American leaders, John Kerry and maybe o Obama, in terms of bribes for American policy? Do you believe that uh, Iran may be bribing the European leaders? Yeah, I believe uh, I, would be, I wouldn't be surprised because uh, I, last time I checked, Europe, uh, beside the, the northern uh, country, European countries, Europe doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, grade well on the, on the corruption index. They're not very good. I believe that France is in the 30s, uh, Germany and, uh, and the other are about the same. So I wouldn't be surprised. Of course, you're not going to read that in the news tomorrow because the newspapers uh, and the journalists are pro-Europe. Uh -huh. But I wouldn't be surprised. Uh -huh. Why not? What? What's the attitude towards uh, American uh, uh, Trump administration leadership from the French Uh, immigrants in Israel. How do they view American foreign policy in the Middle East? Well, um, the French are the worst Western enemy of Israel. The propaganda, the politics, the vote at the UN, the incitement from the media, <coughs> from politicians, come from France. All Europe 
And, and uh, about that, I'm, I'm sad that Israel did not understand that. You know, when, uh, when England, uh, when BBC uh, uh, slip her a bit and uh, say something bad about Israel, uh, you have uh, Bibi Netanyahu immediately denouncing it on, on live television. He never does it or barely does it regarding France because France became a, a, a small country. What Israel did not understand is that culturally, France dominate Europe, not strategically and not on geopolitical, but culturally it does. So when France decided to help uh, a Palestinian to get to the UNESCO, it comes from France, the other follow. So the French are very happy with what, uh, what could happen to the Jews and to Israel. They don't like the situation. They did, not, they did not prepare themselves to a strong Israel country. They prefer the Jews, you know, with, the, with black and white uniforms coming out of the camp and, and publishing things to say, to rememorate the Shoah and to celebrate. They don't like the Jews with, uh, with a khaki uniform being strong and, 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 and fighting for their life and defending the country. They don't like that. It's not what they it's not in the in the narrative. Yes, yes, but but what's the uh, general idea among the the, uh, the sentiment of French emigrants who now reside in Israel who who whom left because it was not comfortable for them? How do they view uh, American foreign policy? They love it. They love it. First of all, you know, um, I believe that most of the French Jews beside the Jews that are on the left, I mean, minority. Most of the French Jews, they love Donald Trump. They know that his, his daughter is Jewish. They know that his grandson are Jewish. So they love Donald Trump. And the embassy moved to Jerusalem is something extremely important for the Jews. And uh, the way he behaved with the uh, uh, Palestinian leader, Mahmoud Abbas, they love that because he talk, he talk kachles, he talked the real world. You know, he tell them uh, stop paying the terrorists, and and also I believe that this is a French the first time an American president in uh, in in recent memory that he doesn't ask Israel to compromise for peace. Until now, what did you see? You see the European leaders asking Israel to compromise, compromise, compromise. Have you ever heard one leader in Europe asking Palestinians to compromise? Never. So they see the change. Uh -huh. uh, are other Israelis also similarly supportive of the Trump uh, Middle East policy? Well, uh, last, last poll say that a majority of Israel is pro-Trump. You know, uh, I think that between 18, 18 and 22 percent of Israelis were pro-Obama. And. Uh, I remember a Jewish friend uh, of mine, uh, a liberal from Los Angeles, he used to tell me, Jean-Patrick, how could you vote for Netanyahu? And I always answered to him, how could you vote for Obama? Yeah. Well, I believe that the last poll I read was 58% of the Israelis like Obama, uh, Trump, sorry, are pro-Trump. And 58% uh, uh, it's with the uh, anti-Trump media. If uh, the media were not anti-Trump, I think you could add 10 or 15 percent. Like here, same thing here. When Trump is at 47 percent, how much would it be without the negative media? 10 or 15 percent higher. Okay, but you can't remove, as you, as you say, uh, uh, the, the, the cat's already out. Now we can't uh, calculate, but to what do you attribute the difference between American Jewish dislike for uh, the Republican Party uh, and uh, Israelis' uh, appreciation of the, of, uh, of the Republican perspectives? American Jews are Democrat before being Jews. Simple. They used to be for the underdog. You know, they come from, uh, they come from Europe, they come from communist countries, so they have that in the blood. And uh, they always were for the underdog, they were for the humanist, and they bought the... And it, well, in the 50s, the Democrat Party was very human. 
humane, you know, it was very, it was uh, uh, very much toward the people, not anymore. So uh, more and more Jews wake up to that, but there is a strong background culture of being Democrat before being Jews. Where do you live now? I live uh, part-time in Tel Aviv and part-time in Los Angeles. And how do you feel being uh essentially a, a self-exile from your mother country looking back now on, on uh, what's taking place that uh, the, the population is turning they're turning against the Americans here they're already against the Israelis what, what's your advice for the Americans well um, my advice for the American is uh, keep don't caring you don't you never cared before don't care now about what about the about the French uh, anti anti-American senti sentiment and feeling. I I uh, I believe uh, I believe it's it's baseless, it's worthless, it's boneless, has no has no f uh, 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 real Impact? real meat around it. Uh -huh. If you would ask them what for, they would they would give the cliche. They wouldn't be able to 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 tell the. Uh, to, to tell the good reason and, and, and be anti-American with a, a strong argument. They don't have it. So it's worthless, you know. It's like uh, somebody who tells you you, have a, uh, you don't have a beard and you have uh, dark hair. Uh -huh. What would you say? Uh -huh. say no. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. On the other hand, is life so great in Israel for the French? Well, uh, not so great for them because... Uh, they're not guilty of that. They come from a socialist country where mother country, mother state take care of themselves, of everything. And they get there and they expect Israel to keep taking care of them. And it doesn't. And it does. They have to work. They have to work hard. They have to wake up early in the morning. They have to accept to make less money. And, uh, you know, I met a young, I met a young, a French immigrant uh, a few years ago, he was like uh, 19. And you know what he tells me? He said, Jean Patrick, I'm tired, I'm exhausted after being here for six months. I said, Why? He said, I have to work 45 hours a week. I'm not used to it. I worked 35 hours a, a week on my life from the age of 17 when I start working. I said, Oh my God, oh my God. Yeah, he's not guilty. What can he do? It's not his fault. It was it was damaged from from the beginning, and that's the problem the the French have there. Because I see the Russian, I see the South African, I see the American, I see Belgium, even the Belgian people. They work, they work hard, they work their ass off. You know, a friend of mine who is a, a, a professor in France, he said to me, "I want to move to Israel. I cannot stand it here anymore. Okay. But what can I do?" I said. Uh, go clean dishes in a cafe. He said, what? But I'm a professor. I said, so what? I remember in the 90s, the Russian, when they came here, they were professors, they were surgeons. What did they do? They were playing violin in the street during the morning, and then they were cleaning dish or, or, or setting up the table, and then a, a third job in the evening, making cigarettes in cigarette factories. Why not you can, why can't you do that? That's the problem of the French people, but it's not their fault. Well, but that would be the reaction to any American or even Brit, any Western European, any uh, uh, Western person who's accustomed to a certain uh, status in life. Yeah. Socialism, the socialism that uh, a, a bigger proportion of the Democrats want to America now. They have no idea what it is. And believe me, the media is very quick at not explaining them what it is. It's terrible. It's dramatic. It's care. It's 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 a uh, it's a death of a civilization. Socialism is. Yeah, absolutely. It's a death of civilization. You know, who creates, who creates richness? Who fought uh, 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 hunger in the world? Capitalism. Only capitalism. And what happened with socialism? Well, you look at, uh, look at uh, France now. You know, they, they, they were degraded from uh, six to seventh uh, richest country in the world. And they used to be fifth, and they don't have money. I, heard, I read yesterday 
that uh, the, the French army cannot, cannot fix their helicopters. Two thirds of the, their the army helicopter, they cannot fix them. They don't have the money to buy the, the, the spare parts. They don't have mechanicians, they cannot fix it. That's socialism. Do you feel that uh, the Americans are living in uh, uh, some kind of uh, a dream? Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it this way. I would put it differently. I believe, I strongly believe that the 21st century will see the death of the, of the progressive ideas because they are so far away from the core human nature, they won't last. I believe, I'm, I won't see it because I'm 65 years old, but you will. The 21st century will see the death of the progressive idea. But, but, it will not go like that. And you have to think of all the students in university who, was, who were raised and educated by communist teachers, far left teachers. They will come to life. They are coming to life and to, and to, be, to be managing the country and, and strong portion of the country with left, far leftist ideas. So it will be it will going down before we go back up. That's how I I see it here in America, and I'm very happy that that Donald Trump came, but he's only here for yet eight years, you know. And if, after, if that, maybe only four. Well, I believe he'd be, he'd be here for eight, because I I believe he's doing things right. The economy is very good, and people know it, and they see it on the paycheck at the end of the month, and you know. The paycheck talks a lot, more than CNN. So I believe it'll be, it'll be here for eight years. Uh -huh. And uh, after him, I don't know what's going to happen, but no one will be as strong as him. Never. He's a unique, he's, a, he's a very special, you know, with, with the good and the bad, but he's very unique. Uh -huh. What do you think about the, uh, the neo-Democrats, the new Democrat Party, which is not only anti-Israel, but even uh, uh, openly anti-Semitic and embracing Louis Farrakhan and Nation of Islam and uh, uh, Linda Sarsour, the, the Muslims who are now rising to power, would American Jews sometime eventually face the same fate of the Jews of France? Yeah, I believe so. And it's very, it's very interesting because we used to say that America is 10 years ahead of Europe. And for that, what you start to see now I've seen it in France for, mm, I would say, 15 years now. The left is in bed with uh, what we call Islamo-gauchist, which means Islamo-leftist. They are in bed with them for 15 years now. They are closing their eyes for their anti-Semitism, pro-Arab, pro pro-Hezbollah, pro-Hamas in the street of Paris, and pro-Hezbollah in the street of London. So you're going to see that, yeah, unfortunately, and it's going to turn, uh, it might turn, it's a big country here, so it might not turn as ugly as uh, Europe, but it's going to turn ugly for the Jews, yeah. They're going to have a hard awakening. Are you happier in Israel than you would be in France? I wasn't happy in France. Are you happier in Israel than you are in America? Yes, but for, for, uh, 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 for very, for very superficial reason. I'm a journalist, so I wake up in the morning and I go to work to my office. My office is a cafe. When I leave my home, I have a choice of four or five great coffee places at a walking distance from home. Tell me where you have that in Los Angeles. N nothing's, nothing's a close walk. Exactly. So, as I said, it's superficial reason, but on a daily basis, my life is much easier in Tel Aviv. And I feel, I feel in Tel Aviv the same thing I, I, I feel here, you know. You have the same, you have the same feeling of freedom, of uh, possibilities, of uh, a country moving forward in the right direction with smart people. There are no more smart people in Europe, unfortunately. You have smart people here. You have smart people in Israel. So I have the same feeling. I found I found common ground from here and there. That's why I chose the, those two two countries to live. Ah, but you live in Tel Aviv. Isn't Tel Aviv a very liberal city? 
even Tel Aviv University is known to be uh, liberal to the extent that it's anti-Zionist. Absolutely, yeah, they refuse to, to raise the flag, but you have the same here in uh, UCLA. <laughs> okay, but it isn't a Jewish state here. I mean, uh... well, you know, uh, I, rem I I believe uh, uh, it's uh, Golda Meir who said the day we will have uh, uh, whores and thieves, we're gonna be a real country. I have to say, I like freedom. So, I like the fact that the far left in Israel can be anti-Israeli. This is for me the proof that I live in a free country. If they were not able to do that, I couldn't say honestly that I live in a free country. This happens here. Doesn't happen in France. Doesn't happen in Germany. They have anti-Muslim uh, anti, uh, law now everywhere. Uh, and blasphemy law. Yeah, yeah. blasphemy of, of Islam, like the, in the Sharia. And uh, uh, you saw what happened in, uh, in uh, Great Britain with uh, Robinson. It's horrible. And in France, uh, you have uh, judicial harassment against people who want to tell what they think. So here you feel the freedom, there you feel the freedom. And that's very important to me. When you fly from America to Israel, will you uh, connect in, in a, a European airport like Orly or Charles de Gaulle? Uh, I try to avoid it because it's, uh, it's small, it's dirty and they close at 9 p.m. Charles de Gaulle Airport? Yeah, unfortunately. So okay. I try to avoid the French airport. So I, I fly through, I fly through uh, Spain. Uh, Madrid has a wonderful airport. I fly to London because uh, Heathrow is great. Or to, uh, um, uh, to Germany sometimes. Frankfurt. Frankfurt, they have great airport. But you're, you're skipping France entirely, intentionally. Yeah, well, no, they skip me. They skip me. If they close at 9 p.m., what can I do? I land, I have three hours uh, connection, what do I do? I count my, uh, my fingers, they but, skip me. But you could, could arrange for a stop there to spend time there in France, even just uh, for a couple of days to get a sense of, of the current uh, state of life? I could do that, but my, my friend from France keep telling me don't come don't come you're gonna be you're gonna be shocked of what you see in the streets so you know uh, I, I cannot say I saw it by myself but I, I sorry I see pictures I see movies I see videos and it looks like uh, my friend described it it's less and less French they, they are losing their culture. You know, uh, Donald Trump just said uh, uh, two days ago or yesterday that uh, it's a shame that they accepted so many Im immigrants because they are losing their identity, their culture, their roots. And he said it's too late. It's going to be too late soon. Mm. Maybe he's wrong. Maybe it's already too late. You know, there are suburbs of, of Paris where you have like 85% of Muslim or people coming or with uh, um, immigrant origin. 80%, 85%, that's a lot. That's, that's more than, than, than uh, 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 an invasion, that taking over, that replacing the French. And they don't make children. Who makes children in Europe anymore? They don't. They don't get that. Israel get it, America still get it. If you want to fight uh, immigration, have children. They don't want to. So when you see news reports trying to make, and uh, almost every news report, uh, every channel on the mainstream media and CNN, MSNBC, try to make Trump, President Trump look bad for his policies on restricting immigration from countries that can't provide proper vetting for uh, Muslim immigrants to, the, the, to this country. They try to make President Trump look bad. What advice would you have for the American viewer who doesn't uh, get to hear another point of view except from someone from there like yourself? Well, um, I believe that today with the internet, with Google, people have no excuse. If they keep wanting to hear only one voice, one side of the story, I pity them. It's, uh, it's, it's sad. It's like, uh, it's like uh, giving up on uh, being informed, you know. Today with the internet, 
what you can do. You can cross-examine the information by yourself. Go on the seat on the right, go on the seat on the left, read what they say about the same thing. You're going to see completely different thing. Go on a third, on a fourth. It takes time, it takes energy, but that's a price today to be informed. And people complain about that, but they shouldn't, because 30 years ago you didn't have the internet. They had the monopoly on, on, on information. You couldn't see, you couldn't know if what they say was true or not. Now you can. If you don't do it, sorry for you, I cannot help you.